Big Mike here with Hey there, Demon. Today's episode, we got Chris Joseph, fifth overall pick in 1987 to the Pittsburgh Penguins and former Canuck. If you like what we're doing, you hit the subscribe button. Let's go. If you're looking for a mug, perhaps a hoodie, head on over to IonlyJudgeGreatness.com. Hey guys, I'm Chris Joseph, and I'm from the show. I'm from the show. I'm from the show. hey chris how's it going I'm good, Mike. How are you? Good, good. Thank you very much uh, for taking the time for us today. That's Ryan, and this is Big Mike. Nice to meet you, Chris. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Mike. Good, thanks. How's your day going? Oh, not bad. How's yours? Uh, good. It's actually sunny for once in Vancouver. Yeah, that's nice. It's a real yeah. challenge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we, get, we get rain 320 days, so the odd Sunday is nice. I know. <laughs> um, you were obviously born in Burnaby? Yeah, born in Burnaby, raised in Burnaby, played my minor hockey Burnaby Winter Club, so I, I know the 320 days of rain very well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, local where do you, kid, nice. Where do you stay now? Uh, I live in St. Albert, Alberta. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been here since probably 1989. Okay. Okay. Married a St. So Albert, other th- been here ever since. Okay. Wow. Okay. Other than the obvious, uh, what got you into hockey in the first place? And uh, did you play any other sports growing up? Uh, yeah, I played uh, soccer, baseball, uh, water skiing at the lake in the summer. Um, I think uh, when I was younger, I was about four years old. My dad, I have an older brother. And uh, my dad just saw a couple of boys that were pretty active. And he's like, what do we, he asked around, he's like, what do we do? And Someone said, uh, put the kids in hockey. Everybody's doing it. And so it's, and we were in Golden, BC. And uh, it was my first, my dad's first teaching job there. And uh, that was it. Started playing hockey in Golden at age four and never looked back. Wow. Okay. Well, you definitely made the right decision. Yeah. yeah. What was your favorite jersey number? And did you have any nicknames? Do I have any nicknames? Yeah. Growing up. Yeah, oh yeah, lots. Uh, Joey's a big one for for me and my sons, and uh, so that was kind of a big one. Chris Joe, a lot of guys around the Oilers organization call me that. Um, but yeah, and then what was the other question? Uh, your favorite number. Favorite number. Uh, I did. I when I was growing up, it was seven. I was a big uh, Paul Coffey fan. And I grew up at Brimble Winter Club, so Cliff Ronning was number seven. And I thought number seven was a pretty good number. Uh, but as you get up to the older, the higher levels, you don't always get to pick your number. Uh, I found that when I came to the Oilers, I was number two. When I went to Tampa, I took 23 and I had a s- successful year. So I kind of like 23. And then that's Michael Jordan as well. So I, I like 23. So those are kind of two of the numbers I like, seven, 23. Okay. okay, yeah. You, you obviously, when you make the NHL, you kind of just take what you can get. I mean, everyone has their preference, but you're not going to argue. You get what you get. Well, my first day I got traded from Pittsburgh to the Oilers, the trainer came up to me and says, do you want two or two? I said, <laughs> you're a kid. I said, I'll take two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, growing up, who did you try and play like or emulate your game after? Uh, again, it would be Paul Coffey. Um, I always thought that, uh, you know, smooth skating, offensive defenseman, um, he was kind of getting, I was getting older. I was probably 13, 14, 15 when he was really taken off. Um, and then before that, I didn't get a chance to watch a lot of uh, Bobby Orr, but obviously the, the offensive defenseman um, were, was what I liked. And you know, I tried to be that offensive defenseman. Then as my career went on, I, I tried to be a little more, stable <laughs> yeah yeah obviously that must be unique for you then uh getting traded for paul coffee wayne van dorp and dave hunter yeah yeah it was um it was pretty surreal i was 18 years old in pittsburgh and i uh, got traded for paul 
it was basically the Paul Coffey trade, but Wayne Van Dorp and, and Dave Hunter, and then we threw in a bunch of players as well. Um, and it was pretty cool. I got to play with Coff later on uh, in uh, in Philadelphia, and uh, he turned out to be everything I always wanted him to be and more. He is just a fantastic human being and a, a great hockey player. And uh, so I was really happy that he was my guy growing up and he's turned out to be an awesome dude. So uh, it's awesome when that happens that way. Being from, being from Burnaby, did you ever know Wayne Van Dorp ahead of time? Uh, before that, no. Okay. Uh, but I got to know Wayne quite well afterwards and I do still stay in touch with him nowadays. Uh, it's funny I ended up getting traded for Van Dorp and Hunter, and they both came back to the Oilers later on anyways. So I played with both of them anyways. Uh, so in that seven-player trade, I ended up playing with all three guys that I got traded for. So yeah, <laughs> it worked out good that way. Good. Yeah. Good. I, I know Wayne personally, too. He used to be my hockey coach here. Yeah. Back in the back in the day, and uh, he he played with my dad in Burnaby, so I thought maybe. Right. Yeah, I love Wayne. He's awesome. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. I see him out here at the John B. Pub once in a while. Yeah, uh, yeah. Take me back to uh, draft day when you were drafted fifth overall to the Penguins in '87. Where uh, were you, and did you know they were interested? Uh, well, at that time, I was uh, rated by Central Scouting to go five, and. Uh, so you kind of get an idea that you're probably going to go first round. You don't know if you're going to go higher or lower. Uh, I had interviews with other teams, um, but my interview with Pittsburgh went well. And it wasn't a for sure, but, you know, when five came around and they picked my name, it was pretty exciting. The draft was in uh, Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit. I had uh, my mom there, my brother, and, you know, we had a bunch of family. So it was a, it was a big day. I ended up sticking around. I was so excited to be there that day that I ended up sticking around and waiting through all 12 rounds. I just wanted to be in the building. And and I had a good buddy that I played junior with in uh, Sean Chambers. You, you might remember him. He played uh, Seattle with me, but he played New Jersey Devils, Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, and so he was going in the supplemental draft, which was after. So I kind of waited around for him too. And he ended up going really high in the supplemental draft as well. Okay. Yeah, it's cool being there. We uh, we got to go to the draft last year in Vancouver, and uh, it was such a cool experience, even as a fan, to just be in the building when these kids were getting drafted. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a big day, especially for the the young kids. It's it's always usually if you get picked, it's one of the biggest days of your career, obviously, unless you can win a Stanley Cup. Who is the Take biggest? Back. Oh, who is the biggest influences in your career? Uh, oh, for sure, my dad, no question. Uh, First of all, I got to say, my dad can't skate. Um, <laughs> but, uh, he was always there to drive us to the rink in the morning at six o'clock every morning. He had, uh, God, we dragged him out of bed so many times and always supportive, always there. A lot of times give you the real tough love, you know, tell me I played like crap one game and I knew it. Right. But, uh, but all we all we all, we all got that drive home that uh, with our parents. You're like, oh man, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna hear it today. Oh yeah. I remember one game. I had a I had a game on Langley, so it was a good 30 minutes away, and I played like crap. And I'm like, I don't want to drive home with dad. I think I got a ride home with a buddy and made my dad drive home by himself just because I didn't want to replay the whole game. And that was in like midget. But uh, <laughs> no, he was always there. He's always supportive. He uh, he basically allowed me to to play and be the player that I was because he basically facilitated everything as far as getting up in the mornings and paying for everything and hockey camps and got our our bill at the sports shop was probably more than the mortgage a lot of months too so <laughs> yeah yeah it was it's expensive to play hockey that's for sure uh take me back to your first NHL goal and do you still have the puck I do not have the puck. That's a good question. Um, I don't know what happened to it, but it was uh, my first NHL goal was 80, would have been 88, 89. Uh, it was at home in Edmonton against LA Kings. It was uh, Glenn Healy was in net. Uh, Glenn Anderson won a faceoff back. Uh, I dragged it from the blue line, took a slapper, and I swear it went off three bodies, and I got credit for the goal. So, 
that was it wasn't pretty but it was a big slap shot from the point that i think got redirected and uh yeah that was my first goal so it was exciting nice to just get that one under your belt okay and then uh, you were lucky enough to uh play for our hometown canucks twice in your career uh what were your best memories out here I think my best memories in Vancouver were just being in Vancouver and being around friends and family. Um, I, I thought that coming home was going to be a bit of a pressure cooker. And I mean, well, the NHL is a pressure cooker, but I, I thought it was going to be difficult to play in front of your hometown crowd and everything, but it ended up being a real blessing. And I've always told young players nowadays, if you ever get the opportunity to play in your hometown, it's pretty special. Uh, so I was there three years apart. I was there in 97. I lived in Burnaby. Uh, we rented a place in Burnaby and then uh, came back in 99, 2000, and we rented a place in uh, Vancouver. So it was awesome. Uh, we had young kids at the time, and uh, my parents, you know, they would come visit. They would take the kids. And, yeah, it was just – it was really nice to be around friends and family a lot. We didn't have the best teams, but – um, but it was a really good experience too. I would recommend to anybody if you get the opportunity to play in your hometown. Yeah, that's for sure. The what, what was it like playing with Burry and McGillney? Oh, they were incredible talented. Um, the one year that I played with uh, Burry, he only played about 10 games that year. He was hurt most of the year, but crazy talented. Uh, McGillney, same, just, he played uh, quite a bit and he was, uh, he had some vision. He had, he had it all. He had the shot. He had the moves. And, and both of them just solid dudes, too. So it was really nice to hang out with those guys. And, you know, they weren't pretentious at all. They were, they were awesome. And uh, they were great players. Do you have a favorite coach or favorite line mate or defensive partner? With the Canucks or just overall? Overall. Yeah. Um, you know, I have – Actually, all my coaches were really good. There are some that uh, stand out. Uh, Glenn Sather in Edmonton was was hard nosed. He was tough, um, but he kind of he knew how to push everybody's buttons differently and get the most out of players. And he was uh, he was really good at that. Uh, I had uh, Tom Rennie in Vancouver, and just super nice guy. Um, you know, a lot of them are. Yeah, most of them are good. You know, honestly, there's really not too many bad people. Um, good, uh, good coach I had in Vancouver that we just lost a little while ago was Jack Malcohargy, and and Jack was unreal. Uh, he was assistant coach uh, under Tom Rennie, and uh, just a solid guy in the room. We loved uh, playing for him. He, you know, he was demanding, but he had that nice balance of, uh, you know, being a leader but being one of the guys as well. And then as far as uh, defense partners, um, had a lot. Uh, played with uh, Kevin Lowe and Charlie Huddy here in Edmonton. Um, you know, oh. I, I don't know. It's In Vancouver, I think I played with Brett Hedekin, just one okay. of the skaters ever. Uh, Murray Barron, um, you know, hard-nosed guy. Uh, a good buddy of mine who now lives in, in Edmonton here is Jason Strudwick. Uh so, you know, we had, uh, I had tons of good partners. I can't say I really had any bad ones. Yeah, we had Strudwick on the show too. Yeah, yeah he's a good guy. Yeah. yeah, good. Did you have any pregame meals or rituals? Pregame rituals? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not really. I mean, I, I tried to stay away from kind of getting too superstitious. Uh, I did like to have my, 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 end, so, you know, you'd have your morning skate, you'd have your lunch. We'd a lot of times go to the same place for lunch, eat the same type of thing, chicken and pasta. And um, then we would uh, go home, have a nap, you know, from two to four. Uh, maybe watch a little Young and the Restless if it was on TV. <laughs> Even though, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not one of those shows that yeah. hockey players watch. And then uh, get up, go to the rink. I'd have a little, uh, I'd drink a whole bunch of coffee. Maybe a couple of Red Bulls back in when I was playing in Europe. Have a Kit Kat before a game. Yeah, was, okay. Yeah, so I guess I had a few superstitions, but not too many. Okay, okay. What would you say your favorite piece of memorabilia that you uh, kept over the years would be for you? Um, 
Oh boy, I got uh, well, I got two world junior gold medals, which is pretty awesome. I didn't really keep it. I mean, I guess we earned it. Um, in my latter years, I started collecting sticks from guys, which is pretty cool. So I have about 50 sticks and I've got some Yara Mary Augers and, and Mario's and Brett Hull and Denny Savard. I got a, I got a bunch of good ones. So I was, I waited too long, but I was fortunate enough to collect a whole bunch of sticks. So I got them. Uh, I recently just got a couple of seats out of, uh, Rexall place in Edmonton cause they're, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I bought a couple of seats out of the building, which is pretty awesome. Um, they're just sitting in my TV room, not really doing much, but it's nice to have. So it's yeah. good to get a few things. Yeah. yeah what do you think of that new? What do you think of that new uh, Michigan or lacrosse goal that they're doing these days? Oh, unreal, unreal! And it just keeps getting quicker and better. And uh, yeah, it was well, I run a hockey school here in in Edmonton and we pretty much gave one day to the Svechnikov and uh, we were teaching all the kids from novice up to midget how to kind of ma master it and uh, it's funny you know you teach the same thing over and over and you get pretty good at it pretty quick so you can see how a guy like Philip Forsberg or, or Svechnikov how they pull it off pretty quick now and poor bullies man they used to you used to slide across and cover the bottom post well now they got to cover the top post too and that's next to impossible so it's it's impressive to watch some of these guys and how skilled they are at high speed yeah i've been trying to pull it off i've been trying to pull it off in my beer league the guys don't like it they don't appreciate it i can get it i can do it in warm-up i can go all over the place with it in warm-up but the moment you're in a game situation the best i've done is got it like stick height and it comes off and then the guy scored but well, no, if you got uh, dry tape, yeah. so you're not late in the period, it's harder to do. But if you got dry tape, it's easier. Yeah. And we also, we used to do the one where we pick it up and, and we pull it back and scoop it like yeah. Michigan. Yeah. Well, now they don't do that anymore. Now they just kind of give it a little pull and you just slide under it. Yeah. And, uh, Forsberg did that against the Oilers a couple of years ago, and it yeah. was, it's a lot faster, just as effective. One of the Canucks prospects, uh, Nils Hoglander, I'm sure he'll be playing for our team next year. Uh, he has mastered it. He did it at the World Juniors, and uh, yeah, it's it's a beautiful goal. Yeah, it's uh, it's a legit goal. It's high skill. It's high speed. It's it's tough to stop. You know, I guess what you do is if you got a kid like that, don't let him get behind the net, or certainly yeah. don't mode on his forehand. You know? Yeah, no, I, I, I always side, you can do that, but you you got to think pretty quickly and say, well, this kid has to come out that side of the net. Cause if he exactly. I do it. But if he comes out that side, it's a goal. Yeah. I try to do, uh, I always try to set up behind the net, like one, cause I liked Gretzky growing up, but then now it's because I want to, I want to one day score that goal. So yeah. Someday keep working at it. You'll get it. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Hey, hey, Chris, you represented our country uh, twice, obviously, in the World Juniors. What was it like putting that jersey on and winning it? Uh, it was awesome. Anytime. I was lucky enough to wear the Team Canada's colors a bunch of times. Uh, with two World Juniors, I played in the national team. I did, I did some Deutschland Cups and stuff when I was over overseas. And never had a bad experience playing for the national team. Um, we always got treated like gold. Uh the first year that I played World Juniors was that brawl in 1987. We got disqualified. So that was a little bit tough, but that had nothing to do with uh, Team Canada. That was just uh, an unfortunate situation. And then the, the that, following year. That Theo Fleury brawl. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Theo, so that team um, was, uh, well, we were a really good hockey team. We were going for the gold in the final game. But the, the next year, uh, Theo, myself, Greg Hoggood and Jimmy Waite were the only four that got to go back uh, in 88 in Moscow. And you won it. We won it that year. So that was pretty cool. We had a pretty stacked lineup in 88 yeah. as well. And you guys would have wanted that lights out uh, year as well. We would have. Uh, we had to score a few more goals, but we were on pace. The Russians weren't very strong uh, that year. So who knows? We never know if we would have won it, but we were going to get a medal for sure. Yep. What was your favorite road barn uh, playing in the NHL? Uh, well, I do. I am a Western Canadian boy, so I did like Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver for sure. Um, but I really like going to the Forum in Montreal. It was like uh, 
it was like going to church. It was the cathedral of uh, the NHL. You know, the you walk in and all you see is Stanley Cup banners. They don't have division or conference banners. So they had, you know, at the time, 23 Stanley Cup banners. And uh, it always smelled like fresh red painted seats. And <laughs> they had these awesome little hot dogs. And I don't know, it was just, you felt like a real hockey player going into the Montreal Forum. So that was pretty cool. Did you have a go-to Sally? No, if I ever scored, I was it was more shock and some. Usually, work on your Sellys too much, so it's just uh, you know one arm up, and you got that deer in the headlights look. Like I can't believe I just scored, but yeah, I don't think I got. I think I got ten one year. That was my max. Do you, wow. do you have a okay. favorite movie about sports? What's that? Do you have a favorite movie about sports? A favorite movie. Yeah, about sports. About sports. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, I love the hockey movies, obviously. Um, I got, uh, I mean, Slapshot. Slapshot's yeah. unreal. Funny story. I got it right here. I didn't plan this. Um, but uh, this is uh, Barkley Donaldson. He's, oh, wow. Uh, and uh, his son works with me here in Edmonton. And uh, so... His name is Ross, actually, and he came out and uh, came to my hockey school last summer, so he signed up for me. So we sat in the dressing room and talked about the movie Slapshot, and you know he knew Paul Newman and the Hanson brothers and everything. He said it was a uh, pretty good experience. So yeah, so that was cool. Favorite movies for sure, um, Slapshot. Uh, other hockey movies, I love Miracle. I got a good buddy that was in Miracle. Uh, he was one of the Russian players because it was all filmed in Vancouver too. Yeah. So he was players um and he's a, a buddy of mine that's a firefighter in burnaby so uh it was a good movie as well um you know and then for non-hockey movies uh forrest gump like some of the old stuff you know like i love the, the good movies they're all good yeah hey chris i just want to say i'm so sorry about your loss jackson from the home belt broncos obviously uh which was one of the biggest tragedies in canadian history i think uh, when in, did you find out about the crash? Uh, probably about an hour after. It was. Uh, I got a phone call from a from a friend here, and uh, just told me that there had been an accident. Uh, we didn't know a whole lot, but uh, see, so yeah, that just started a, a long drive out to Saskatchewan, and uh, yeah, it was life changing event that uh, you know you you don't wish upon anybody. It was. Uh, it was a terrible thing. We're living it every day. Um, you know, my, my wife and my, my daughter and my other son, uh, we're still, it's two and a half years now. And we're still, we're still missing them every day. It's, uh, it's brutal. Um, there's still, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to move forward a lot of days too, because uh, it was such a big thing that we, yeah, we keep, getting kind of dragged back into it you know whether or not we're fighting for seatbelts or safer roads or um, just uh, you know doing interviews and stuff like that so that that part is challenging and you know we miss we miss Jackson a ton it's um, easily you know like and I can say this without question it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life and making the NHL was a piece of cake compared to losing a child so uh, yeah it's uh, we appreciate all the love and support that we've had from the whole country it's uh, it's been really impressive uh and very generous of everybody to you know love us the way they have um but it's it's been a grind for sure yeah i couldn't imagine it and uh obviously us as canadian hockey fans and stuff i remember all putting our sticks outside and everything and supporting them and we had uh caleb dahlgren come on and talk to us as well so that was kind of a cool experience hearing his side of the story and how everything went down and yeah, it's it's uh, it's a touching stuff. Touching stuff for us, that's for sure. Yeah, thanks for thanks for yeah. You know, okay. And the sticks outside the door. I know the whole it was it was incredible. The whole country was supporting us, and it was it was pretty special. Even though it was it was a living hell at the time. Yeah. Absolutely, and it's still a living hell, of course, for everyone that was involved and has people involved. Who's uh, one player that had you starstruck? Uh, Gretzky for sure. 
Um, you know, when I Do you was, have one of his sticks? I know you were saying about all your sticks. Did you have a Gretzky have, stick? Oh, I don't have Gretzky stick. Um, I ended up, uh, when I was a kid, I sat in line for three hours at uh, the Harbor Center downtown Vancouver to get uh, a Wayne Gretzky autograph on a Mr. Big poster. I don't think I have <laughs> it. But I waited in line three hours and got his autograph. And, uh, and I think it was like four years later, I was playing with him, which was pretty cool. And, and he's another guy too, just a fantastic guy. Um, first class, obviously, um, but definitely starstruck that whole team. When I got traded from Pittsburgh to Edmonton, they had Messier, Gretzky, Fuhr, coffee, all well, coffee was gone. Um, but they had a, the whole team and it was, it was unreal. It was a tough lineup to crack. Absolutely. What's been your uh, go-to quarantine snack? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> trying to, I'm trying to be as healthy as I can, but some days it just seems like a bag of Miss Vicky's chips while I sit there and watch another Netflix show. It's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> like, I hear you. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's doing the same thing. We've been through Oh, yeah. Netflix. Hey, you look like you're still in plane shape. I mean, uh, obviously, yeah. you're a firefighter, correct? Yeah. So that, that helps, I guess. Yeah, and going to work has been a real mental uh, break for us. Like, I I need that social. And uh, if I didn't have work, I'd probably be losing my mind a little bit right now. Um, so that's been kind of nice going to work, even though we have a lot of restrictions at work. Um, but it's been really good to go to work. And a frontline responder, too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's definitely some restrictions, and we have to do things a little differently. Um but for the most part, you know, me hanging out at the fire hall with uh, with my my crew has been a lot of fun and given me a little bit of sanity in this these tough times. Absolutely. Everyone needs that. I mean, everyone's kind of tough these days, nothing to do. And like you yeah. said, Netflix, you're almost running out of shows on Netflix these days. Yeah. Yeah. Netflix is the, the king right now. Oh, yeah. Do you still lace them up ever? Yeah, I, I coached. Uh, I coached a lot of years. Like I coached for 15 years after I retired. So basically every year except for this year. Uh, I took this year off because my youngest son is now gone. He's graduated from midget hockey and has gone out to Kelowna to play junior B out there. Uh, for the oh, club. cool! So I, I saw this as an opportunity to take a year off. Um, I don't know if I'll take two, three, four years off or if I'll get right back into it. I really enjoy coaching. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, but this year we've been off, which in hindsight now with COVID is, has been good, you know, like it's because everything's shut down here anyway. So it wouldn't have mattered. If the right opportunity came in the NHL or let's say the WHL and uh, they offered you a coaching position, would you take it? I probably would. Yeah. Uh, you know, hockey is still my passion. I love my job as a firefighter, um, but hockey's always been my passion. And if something came around, I'd probably uh, have to weigh the pros and cons, obviously. But uh, I do really love uh, coaching and, and, and hanging out with the, the hockey family. And, yeah, it's a it's not a bad way to go. Hey, WHL teams, come on, figure it out. Sign this guy. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice. Hey, hey Chris, I just want to thank you so much uh, for taking the time for us today. We really appreciate it, and we love chatting with you. We were big fans of yours when you played, and uh, we wish you best of luck for the rest of your life and career. Thank you for having me on, guys. really appreciate it.